Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here this Friday morning, wrapping up a big week here on Panhandle Outdoors. We've enjoyed doing it and had a lot of fun this week. Let's take a look at our weather brought to us by Gulf Coast Air Conditioning. Drew Pollard and his hardworking crew taking care of everyday comfort needs and got a little bit of rain coming. Uh, they don't really know exactly when it's coming, but looking forward to tomorrow, different areas, uh, some maybe even today. So be, be aware of it if you're planning outdoor activities. Our high today is going to be 83, low 69. Water temperature at the end of the pier, 77 degrees. It's up there. Our river readings. Brought to us by Coca-Cola of Panama City. Take a look at the Apalachicola Blunstown this, this morning reading a 15.7. The good news is dropping out a little bit, but it's still still high. The Choctahatchee at Carabell is at a 10.3. It's pretty plateaued out now. This rain is going to keep it up there uh, probably on through the weekend. So it's going to be some high water. Our tides, we're looking at a high tide this morning at 10.45. And a low tide this evening at 8.23. And we'll be getting our tide charts back next week. I've, I've been promised that, so I, I miss them. I know you do too. Let's go and take a look at our fishing game times today brought to us uh, by Blue Water Outriggers in Port St. Joe. Our time, 12.34 to 2.34 this morning. We just passed it. But uh, after lunch, 12.57 to 2.57. That's not a bad time. Ask your boss if you can get on off half a day and just you know, go fishing right after lunch. Nothing to it. Wind's going to be coming again in double figures south-southeast at about 11. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. This will give me a great opportunity now to get outdoors and go fishing. We have Jeff, I'm going to show him one more time, Jeff Peck's kayaks. Folks, these are good kayaks. And uh, look, at they've got a rod holder here in the middle screen up top left hand on the port side. Got a rod holder back here. This is a great introductory when you get into uh, fishing off of kayak. I'm, I'm thinking about going uh, this weekend. I, I miss my kayak fishing. Don't get to do enough of it. So there's Jeff's number there. Give him a call. Uh, this, this is a really good price, I can promise you. So I want to just uh, give you an opportunity to look at those. They're really nice. Now, we, we have some pictures. I wanted to, uh, we're going to talk about a pier fishing trip. But we'll talk about that later. Well. I'll just show, uh, here's just a group group of kids right here. We just had, we didn't catch a lot of fish, but we'll have this video, this is some of them. And what's special about this group, uh, I was telling Jeff, I got a little sad because Mason, my grandson, should be on this trip. These kids went to elementary school with Mason at Bay Haven, and they all waved and said, hello, Mason. So I sent that picture to Mason. So they had a good time, good group, and uh, very enjoyable. All right, let's go. Take a look at some of our, we're going to have Brock Meyer coming on the show next week. Brock has been catching some fish. He caught this big red. He's going to come on the show Monday. Uh, I love having Brock on. We, we, we'll talk about a lot of fishing. Okay. My son-in-law, Jim, first turkey last weekend. He hammered a 20-pound gobbler with a, four, with a 14 at 22 yards. I, I would like to take credit but my old buddy John made it happen. Worked the bird from 7 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. I mean, that, working a bird like that and for that long period of time, that's W.C. Harlow over there. Well, let's, here's a picture of W.C. in the middle, working the bird, and we, he gets the credit for it. But four hours getting that bird. Congratulations. That's a great picture there. Thank you, W.C. Harlow, for sharing that with us. There he is. That's a framer. All right. Caitlin Rogers, we're talking about this. Uh, Caitlin's one of my former students. Byron Rogers is her granddad. Some of y'all may know him. Uh, going on a houseboat. That's the thing about this high water. If you own a houseboat, you still can get out there into the into the woods off the water. So they went catfishing. Look at a dog there. You know, they had a good time. And they got a mess of catfish. Look at there. Look at that mess of catfish. Uh, this time of year, you can do that. You can really catch them good. All right, first kings off the pier. Uh, this was on. Uh, this was a couple of days ago. 
Okay, right here. This is uh, Tristan White, a 34-pound king, and Jimmy Coe, a 42-pound king, on April the 3rd. Okay, that was just not too long. That was, what, three or four days ago. Nice kings right there. That's on Panama City Fishing Page from Carabell Fishing. Uh, we're talking about them catching uh, catching pompano down at the St. George Island. I got them cleaned up right there. Okay, and... Okay, Bill Roxby. Sends us a lot of pictures of deer and bears and all kind of stuff. Good morning, Coach. I'm on the beach just west of Santa Rosa this morning. I caught this black drum well over 40 pounds, by far the biggest fish I've ever seen on the beach. I caught him on a large sand flea. Check it out, Bill. That's a great catch there, buddy. That is a fine, fine fish coming off the surf. Good job. I'm glad you shared that with us. Okay, uh, let's see. That's, uh, I've got a couple other announcements right here. Let me see. Okay, I got this from uh, from Mike here. Okay, Mike McGraw. My buddy Jeff, Mike McGraw, my buddy Jeff was surf fishing on the west end and caught this bonefish. He did not know what it was and sent me a picture. He then caught a second consecutive bonefish about the same size. What are the odds of that happening? And I, they were caught on the west end of Bay County, the west end of the beach over there. I, I said, my green print, that is amazing. Back-to-back -back bonefish up here is unheard of. That Mike, thank you for sharing that with us. You just don't see that often. Uh, talk about flounder. We're going to talk about later on in, in the show about the flounder bite is really strong. This is down at Port St. Joe. Trout and flounder. Uh, I think the First Baptist Church, the outdoor ministry, they were going to do a bass tournament this weekend. I didn't know a lot about it, but I just wanted to do that to let you know they have. This is the First Baptist Church of Chipley. They have postponed until next week because we have some bad weather coming in tomorrow. So that's a good call. First Baptist Church of Chipley, the Bass Tournament of Sunny Hills. Okay. I love this. Ashley Copeland. This is the other night. Good, good evening, Mr. Winston. Leaving church tonight and was in awe at how beautiful the moon was. Thought you would enjoy it. Ashley, thank you for sharing that. Was that full moon last week something else? Oh, I mean this week, uh, last night really, and then the night before was... Just as beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, that's going to take care of pictures. We've got the announcements now. We're going to let you know when the official scallop season is going to start for 2023, right after this break, right here. Okay, welcome back. Uh, let's talk about scallop season. It's always been a big deal around here, uh, setting the season. It, it's fascinating and, and just challenging each year to, to try to figure this out. The FWC has come out with the times, and here it is right here. This is, uh, okay, we're in the green, okay? Gulf County in the green. I say we, the local folks. Uh, I know down the blue, some of y'all in Franklin County have a, have a longer season. But let's look at Gulf County first. Zone A, August 16th through September 24th. Now, go ahead and make your reservations. Uh, we... Uh, we definitely will be uh, down there ourselves with a lot of, a lot of friends, and, and we're going to be joined by a lot of y'all. <laughs> we look forward to it. But uh, if you look at the others, now this, this is what I was looking at last night. Franklin County starts July 1. So that all that area down there, all the way down to, uh, to, to the next section is Finn Holloway. That's the Sewanee River. Folks, they start in June the 15th through Labor Day. Is that amazing? Is that dotted yellow right there in the center? That's, that's Stenhatchee. That Stenhatchee area is, is sort of ground zero down there for people going scalloping. A lot of people are doing that now. Then the next one on down there, Levy County, where Cedar Key is, that's July 1st, and Pasco. So all of them, Pasco County, that's way down there, or Tarpon Springs. But anyway, up here in our area, you got the dates of Franklin County. Uh, but if you want to go, go uh, make reservations at Stin Hatching. That's a long drive for the day, but so you want to maybe camp out or something down there. So that takes care of our of the uh, scallop season. We'll certainly be talking about it. It's be interesting to see what the count is. Uh, it's going to. I want to talk more about it in detail when I have more information. I'm going to try to get with the Florida Wildlife Research Institute down in Tampa of the FWC and get their feedback on it. They've they've sort of quit doing the count that we used to do that little triangle. That was always a lot of fun and. 
and uh, very, very informative doing that. It gave a great opportunity to inform a lot of folks about it, and it went really well. I don't know why they stopped doing it, but they didn't. That's my opinion. Okay, like I said, we're on a pier fishing trip, uh, and we didn't catch a lot of fish. Like we'll have the video next week, but we had a wonderful time. The thing about the thing about it, we don't get out there early enough. You know, the kids got to come to school, then we got to get the rod and reel loaded up, then we got the kids on the bus and drive the bus all the way out to the beach and then get out on the pier. So it's 8.30, 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 8.30, 9 o'clock before the kids start fishing. And to me, I want to be there at daybreak and start slowing down about 9 o'clock. But they they had fun, and but we didn't catch a lot of fish. But I want to. I started thinking about just, most people don't know much about it. I, I walk around and talk to a lot of people and see a lot of people. and. A friend of people, and we did we did have a little bit of excitement there catching some fish, but uh, you'll see next week. But let me go over these nine pier fishing trips uh, tips with you because on our trip we talked about this. This if you go out there, here's a, just nine basic tips. Number one, research. In other words, if you get a chance, go talk to people first, even before you go fishing out there. Number two, scout during low tide. Now we don't have any structure off our pier, so that's not that important. Number three, definitely bring two gear two spinning gear outfits definitely have a, I, I take three and get, get something to haul your gear out there they make these really nice buggies now number five uh we'll call match your hat just look down at water we saw a bunch of cigar minnows hanging around and just catch it try to catch it with a, some live bait and fish with that too uh, a battery powered bait book is, is good if you need one uh, but a lot of times you just catch fresh bait and put it on there but they are really good number six Number seven, of course, your sunglasses. You know that. And number eight, use a pier net to land your fit, to land your catch. What made, me, what made me want to go over this? Because we had some of these incidents happen. Uh, we had a big, we had a big remora on, and they got a, you know, it's a big thrill to them. But uh, we didn't have a pier net with us, or, or a hook to hook and bring it up. Of course, a hook would have killed it, but a pier net's ideal. But we didn't have one with us, and also on, on matching the hatch. Uh, the sabiki, we didn't talk about this a lot, the little sabiki rig that we do show on occasion on catching, catching bait and all, they're, they're really good on a pier to catch bait with, especially if you see them and you drop down and you pull up a couple at a time. The kids got a kick out of just, you know, catching the live bait on, on the sabiki rig. And, and uh, I, I gave uh, the young man who caught the biggest fish I bought his lunch and then I was on the way out. I told him I'm gonna give an award this year, first time ever, give an award for whoever catches the smallest fish. <laughs> and we had a lot of competition for that. But anyway, I gave a $25 uh, gift certificate to Academy Sports and Outdoors to the young lady who, who uh, caught the smallest fish. And I really had to go back to whoever caught first one to catch the small fish because we caught a bunch of small ones. Okay. All right, let's go on up. Uh, we're going to, let's get our draw and I got all kinds of things coming up. I wanted to show you all this video, but I'm going to run out of time. I'm thinking, uh, what do you think, Jeff? I'm going to run out of time. Uh, okay. Let's go and do our drawing. Okay. And by the way, on the, when we're giving away the Academy uh, Sports and Outdoors uh, gift certificate to these kids, these, these, these sponsors out there really want these young people to take advantage of them and, uh, and they really enjoy giving them. Okay. As Tarp and Doc enjoys giving this away, the big, $20 gift certificate is going to, from Panama City, Ethan Walding. And okay, we're going to the Big Red Snapper. And that's going to, from Lynn Haven, Steve Brookins. Phyllis, I know you, uh, Phyllis is happy now because you're jumping up and down. Steve Brookins, some old buddy there, catching Red Snapper. Okay, and let, let us know when y'all going to get it prepared. Uh, also, let me mention again uh, on the outdoor inventions we we had the kids on and uh, if you get a chance to to do anything like that I, it's interesting this is the fourth year of doing it uh, please don't take them uh, think i'm bragging but we started doing outdoor inventions 20 some years ago in class i think i told you and it was just one of our assignments and it was so fascinating to me what the kids would come up with they didn't really have to make it like those kids made that one it was just something sometimes, some of them made it, but they would just sort of draw it on a board or, or have a picture of it or sketch it out. And, and all, the only requirements was that you have it, uh, it has to pertain to the outdoors and you'll, you'll be able to get a patent on it. And 
but I don't know if anybody ever got a patent. So get your uh, kids, grandkids, neighbors, nieces, nephews, whatever, get them to be thinking about something like that. And one of the big advantages now is to get the kids to watch Shark Tank and see, come up, see some of those things they come up with, some of them outlandish, and yet they make, they're making millions of dollars. And some of them are so brilliant. I said, why didn't we think of that? So uh, anyway, the inventions are, are cool, and especially it was so nice having those three young people on. They did real well. They're tenth graders and handled themselves real well, and, and they were a little nervous and all, but I got some good feedback from them and appreciate that, and uh, really enjoyed doing that. So what we're going to do now, go ahead and uh, get set up for our famous Friday fishing uh, forecast. We've got all kinds of things going on, and we'll be right back after the break. Okay, welcome back. Let's take a look at our famous Friday fishing forecast. Before I do that, off to my left is this little collection of fish, and I don't know if you know, but I did this on purpose to put them together. Of course, this is, of course, a big bull red. Okay, we understand what that is. And this, this, these three right here are what we call a panhandle slam. The flounder in the back, the trout, which you can't see real well. This is a trout right here. I don't want to pick them up because they'll come crashing down like dominoes. And then the redfish. So if you catch, all three of those fish at one time on one fishing trip, you've got done the panhandle slam, and uh, some be very proud of. It's a challenge to do that. A lot of times, uh, uh, you get two out of three, and then the fish another couple of hours to get that third one, and they don't make it. So if you do get a panhandle slam, send it to us. Let us know. We're gonna give you special recognition. Freshwater. Let's talk about freshwater. You saw the pictures earlier of, of Caitlin Rogers and and uh, how, how they did so well with the catfish on high water. It's hard to you know, be optimistic as a fisherman when we have so much high water. But there are, there are fish that get caught on high water. So just keep that in mind. You change your technique a little bit. I know a lot of y'all up there in Calhoun, Liberty County, Jackson County, over the years, generation after generation, have learned to fish high water. So Choctahatchee Bay, uh, go up the rivers there, Black Creek and all, there's still fish being caught up there. It's still filled in different areas. So freshwater, be aware of that with the catfish. In the bay, uh, it's been really fascinating, uh, I've used that word three times a day, on, on the flounder that's been caught uh, around here. It's just been a good run on flounder being caught and also some being gigged. I mentioned last Friday how good the flounder bite has been. Sheephead, I put a little asterisk by sheephead. Chris Wynn, Captain Chris Wynn, uh, had a picture this week on, on one of his trips. The sheepheads are still out there and that was, uh, you know, when the captain says that, then you take it to the bank. So sheephead are still being caught. So it's been a good year on sheephead. Uh, speaking of good year, it hasn't been that good of a year so far on Pompano. Uh, well, we're going to uh, talk more about it uh, Monday when we have Brock Meyer come on because he, he does a lot of Pompano fishing, but we've talked about it. And, and the reports I've gotten, uh, I've seen we've shown some Pompano and all, but you got to keep in mind, there's a lot of people fishing for them. I'm just getting a few pictures in. so. Right now, the pumping oak bite's been pretty slow, and it was slow last year and the year before. We haven't had a good year in a couple of years on pumping oak, a good strong run. We just have them coming in day in and day out. So it's going to be interesting to follow those reports. Also, uh, on surf fishing, I wrote down the red drum, uh, the red drum being called, you just saw Bill Roxby over there on Santa Rosa Beach, black drum being called in the surf. That's the thing about surf fishing, you just throw three rods out there, put different baits, throw them at three different distances, and shallow, medium, and then one to Mexico if you can throw it that far, and you get something going on. So you never know what you're gonna catch. The whiting bite has been good. Uh, through the winter, on into the spring, some, some big whiting have been caught recently, so that bite has been strong. Pier fishing, I'll get back to it. I, I'll give you a first-hand report on pier fishing. My best advice, go early. Okay, get on out there. The Spanish are being caught. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, a lot of, quite a few Spanish are being caught, really, but being caught earlier. And the, uh, the kings are right, you saw the first two caught uh, early part of the week. And they're gonna, they're gonna really be coming in. This is, this is April right now. It was about to get to the middle of April. And April and May, the kings are coming. Not to my knowledge, have any cobia been caught. I haven't heard any reports on cobia. Uh, and everybody's waiting on that. And a lot of people are sort of remorseful on, on Kobe because they used to catch so many and not catching any now. And I, I've talked to a lot of, a lot of folks about that. Uh, you, just, you just never know where you're going to catch though off the pier. Uh, different things and you can move around. It's, it's comfortable fishing off the pier. I would encourage you to, 
to give it a try. Uh, it's not a it's not a situation where we have to get a lot of equipment out there and just get out there and you walk around a little bit and sit down and and uh, it's sort of a community of all kinds of different folks uh, uh, fishing for different things. You know, from the hardcore fishermen to the, the people who a lot of people just pay to walk out on a pier and see what people are doing. So it's always an enjoyable experience going on the pier, and I I've enjoyed. So I would recommend that to you. Now, getting back to freshwater, brim's going to be be out of the picture, I think. Uh, like I said, freshwater, your best bet is going to be, you know, getting your, if you can get some trot lines out. And uh, here we go, we got it back, back up. Anyway, real quick on locations, let me go to uh, St. Joe, St. Joe Bay. I don't get to talk about it enough. St. Joe Bay, you got that southeast wind coming. You get down here and just drift, drift fishing. It's going to be really good uh, uh, fishing for trout and redfish in St. Joe Bay will be good this weekend. Good reports back behind St. Vincent, uh, where's St. George, uh, right, right on here St. George, you saw, if you ever get a chance to fish at Bob Sykes Cut, you're gonna get, you have to get there by boat. That is a unique place to fish. Strong current, big sharks, all kind of, all kind of things coming uh, through there, <laughs> literally. And these docks, right back here on the backside, fishing those docks on the backside, they used to be, nothing used to be back there. Now docks are holding, holding redfish all through here. But you got to catch a good wind. You want a southeast wind coming in. You don't want a north wind coming in in that area. All back through here. Good fishing all the way to the bridge. Okay, so uh, get a chance. That, that's a, that would be one of the recommendations of fishing this week on the backside of St. George Island if you have a boat. If you don't have a boat, try to go surf fishing or, or pier fishing. Okay, going to have to start wrapping things up. One of the, one of the things about uh, having our guests, we, we, like yesterday, everything's unplanned, unscripted. And it's just a lot of fun having young people on, and uh, you know I don't even write notes down. We just start talking. So that's one of the one of the privileges and beauties of doing Panhandle Outdoors, just sort of off script and doing it. But it's uh, an honor to do it. I just I, I appreciate the ability to uh, have you to watch the show. So thank you for watching. We'll wrap it up for the week. Got a big week planned next week. Some special guests, some good video from pier fishing, and all kind of good things. Y'all have a great weekend. Do something good for someone else. Enjoy our great outdoors. Take care of it. And God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.